Hey everybody, I hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is after, after. Kind of like that picture, what's next? Come to John chapter four and you know, John will skip some time in between his and he'll say, and then, uh, you know, on another day or on another day, he, he doesn't go necessarily like day by day. He just telling the different stories. He's trying to uh, paint a beautiful picture of, of Christ and tell certain and specific things. Now, John chapter four is a beautiful picture of Jesus's ministry outside the Jewish community. Uh, it also, we see a divine appointment of Jesus with the Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus, as a man, wouldn't have been talking to a woman uh, in that culture. Then we also find that the woman, uh, he wouldn't have been talking as a Jew to a Samaritan. And then the woman shouldn't have been there that time of day, in the hottest part of the day. But it's because she was an outcast. Jesus picks up on all this, obviously, as he already knows. It was a divine appointment. And they say, well, why did he need to meet this woman here? Well, a lot of it we find in the verses that follow. And that's where I want to pick up today and we'll tie in with the word after. John chapter 4, verses 39 through 42. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now, there's really kind of two audiences here that we could say this is what you need to do after. So, one, we take the Samaritan woman and what she needed to do after she realized that Jesus was the Christ, she went and told everyone. It, you can imagine that she didn't hold back uh, because the fact that the kind of the city was probably in a, in a little uproar and an excitement going on about the fact that the Savior, the Messiah, was there. And, and so she realizes it, you know, she was a little hesitant at first as well. But as soon as she realizes that he is the Messiah, she leaves her water pot behind. Uh, she's not worried about what she was trying to do or what her goal was for that day, even the task at hand. She has a new task and it was given to her by God. She was so stirred up that she had to tell others. So that's a great example for all of us that when we first come to salvation, we need to tell others. Now, that's not something that should fade away. That is still our goal, is to tell others about what Christ has done for us. That's really the reason, don't you think? I mean, we weren't there. We're not God. We're not Christ. Don't you think the reason that Jesus met with this woman was because he knew that she was going to tell everyone else in Sakaar? And, and so to think about that, he, she now goes and witnesses to all these people. Now, they believe because of her testimony. Now, you think about this. How could an outcast woman, how could that be an example of, of testifying about the Messiah being there? And I think it was really because they probably, they had to have seen a change in her. They had to have seen maybe that before she was one way and now she's a different way. And, and the only thing different in between was Jesus. So now, because probably, I, I'm just saying we can speculate a little bit there, probably because of the way she was acting, probably the case, because the way that she was talking, the way that she may be before, you know, as being an outcast and was disgruntled. And now she's probably upbeat and excited. We know she must be excited because she's leaving things behind to, to go and share the news of Jesus. But then also, you know, you get this, this feeling that she's probably bringing people back to Jesus because she's like, hey, this is the one, right? I mean, how else? Oh, just find the guy. No, this is him. Let me take you to Jesus. Let me introduce you to Jesus. And then it says that many more believed after they heard Jesus's words. So some of them believed because they heard what she said. 
Some of them believed because they had heard the invitation maybe and just got to Christ and then they believed. But then you have these that said, now it's not because you told us, but it's because we've received it firsthand. And, and this is the probably the second thing. I, I said that, you know, for as believers, when we get saved, we need to realize we have a message to tell. And that's what we need to do after. But we also need to notice that after we hear about Jesus, and this would be really for the lost, after you hear about Jesus, if you don't have a personal encounter with him, then ha are you going to be changed? Will you truly believe? So there's a difference in believing about Jesus and believing in Jesus. And perhaps some of these people that heard, I believe some of them believed right out, outright to begin with, they believed. Others believed what she was saying, but they, they believed that it was true for her, but they probably didn't believe it was true for them until they had a personal encounter with Christ. That's where their relationship began. That's where their belief became solidified and strong. And today, no matter who you are, if you're listening, you're, you've made it this far into the video. So I, I, I pray that God is tugging on your heart to say, look, now that you know about Christ, now I want you to have a personal encounter with Christ. Now, that's, that makes all the difference in the world. It's one thing to believe about Jesus. And it's one thing to say you believe the God of the Bible. But it's another thing. You know, a lot of times in the Old Testament, you would hear, even at times, Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It, it wasn't until it was really his God as well that it made a difference in his life. You, you know that James also tells us that even the demons believe in Jesus. They know who Jesus is. They believe in his power. They believe in that. But they shudder at the name of Jesus. So if they believe in Jesus, obviously they're in hell and will be forever in the lake of fire. So what's the difference? They don't have a, they haven't placed their faith and trust in Jesus. They believe about him, but not in him. And they haven't placed their own life in his or really placed his life in theirs. So today, the simple thing is this. What's next? Now that you've heard about Jesus, what's, what are you going to do after that? Are you going to turn away from him? Are you going to deny the things that he's, that he's told you? Deny the things, the, the feelings that you have and the, the, uh, where the spirit is tugging at your heart? Are you going to deny those things? Or are you going to go and strive to have a personal encounter with Christ and then never be the same? And I'm going to tell you this. When he makes a change in your life, you'll do just like that Samaritan woman. You will be itching and, and desiring to tell others about what the Messiah has done for you. So today, what will you do after you've heard about Jesus? God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.